Hey, how you doing? Hey, Jean, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I recognize uh, your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's screaming in my ears. Uh, that's so funny. <laughs> she will be the one uh, answering the, the question. She'll be <laughs> Now, have you ever worked with that actress? How did you find her? She, no, she never. Was it was my first time, but uh -huh. uh, you know, Quebec is kind of a small place, you know. So you see the work. It's easy to see the work of of the actresses and have a good kind of broad view of who you can hire. And uh -huh. but. Martin is a very seasoned actress and I was stunned when I kind of, I had this hunch for her and I started digging her work and I was like, she didn't have that much lead role. Uh -huh. And I was like, wow, I think this, this is the time. <laughs> she was amazing so, yeah. in that yeah. role. It was such a, it was such a interesting progression too of like her character. Um, you know, and also like comparing it to mutants, the sort of pace of the film where mutants had started off, you know, almost like a childhood, um, you know, kind of coming of, you know, age story and then that ending, you know, with so dramatic. And here in this film, you know, it's sort of like it starts with the tension and it really goes and then at the end there's this sort of redemption. So what was it like? Like, did you want to tell the story from her perspective? Was that a, uh, something that you were looking for, speaking from the female? Side? Oh, it's a, it's a cool parallel that you're making between the two films. I really like to flip things on their head. And I think like short film is a, a good format to do that because you, you, you know, you want it, you want your film to bang. You have just a little time to do it. And the codes you know those coming of age codes or family drama codes they're so ingrained in all of our brains and our perception of what is a story that just to play with that and kind of confuse and then brings the audience on a weird and wild tale i just i just can't help myself but to do it <laughs> but yeah and and that was the same for 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 i'll end up in jail i really wanted to the story started with this idea of my of my mother and other stories about a hunt of my friend and and it was always this model of like the quiet lady kind of having this surge of power while driving a huge pickup truck and i was i was like huh that's interesting and i i started question where 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 did it start why was she you know was driving pedal to the metal and then what could happen mm -hmm. and i discovered that through the story i could kind of kill that archetype of the mother you know that is that i show at the beginning and mm -hmm. thousands of films start like that but i was mm -hmm. like for her to get to that redemption she'll have to to, to die in some way and that's what happened in her final confrontation with jelly i think that the mother figure kind of die when she 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 get the the guy you know right because i loved when she said you know i stayed for 18 years you know that that i thought was just so like telling you know of her progression um, yeah it was it was so exhilarating when you see her have that freedom and she's right <laughs> and that and you're it like, was oh. so cool to shoot really it was because it was really experienced just like you received it like Martin when when this moment happened where she had to run uh the we only had a few minutes left of sun you know it was uh -huh. falling so quickly because in November days are so short here so we were like that's it that's that we only have one shot you know and she I think she kind of was ready till until the till the first time she wrote, read the script she was thinking about that scene so mm -hmm. when we said action she was it's all there you know that's so interesting and also when you're talking about the sunlight I'll to, I would think to have to film in that um weather I mean because there's so I mean there's so much snow was it freezing outside like what was the actual experience filming like in that it was intense <laughs> it was very intense it, it, 
for um, for the record, it wasn't supposed to be a winter film. It, uh -huh. it, it was supposed to be a kind of a end of fall film during the hunting season. And there was this kind of thematic of like Maureen and the mask she have of, on her face with all the makeup and stuff like that. And then all this, the pattern and the nature of all the, the colors and the leaves and the hunter and her being hunted at the end, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of there in the scenario. But three days before we started shooting, there was like three feet of snow fell on the ground. Ah. And on the first day, it was minus 26 degrees. So, Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we only had like, a, that's a three days to kind of prepare ourselves to these kind of very intense uh, condition. Mm -hmm. And it changed really the whole experience. We had to we had to be even more focused and even more kind of um, precise in our movement and in our, when we were moving from set to set and keeping our energy. Cause you know, at minus 26 and you start shooting at like 6 AM oh it's intense day for the whole crew. But I think everybody kind of cranked their game up. And in the end, I think it's, it's the best thing that, that could happen to the film. You know? Yeah, I mean, it gave it so much atmosphere, and especially like you said, in the like in that sense of being hunted, you know, you definitely got, um, you know, that feeling of, you know, um, just that vastness and just the whiteness of the snow. Yeah. That yeah, you're right. It's really kind of, it's it's even more of a wasteland, you know. It's even more kind of hostile to her. Mm hmm. And so is this a project that you had like had in mind, like that you wanted to make the short film or did it kind of just evolve, like you were saying, in sort of the, the role of a woman or mother coming to terms with different things? Like how did that, what, how did your movie sort of progress or come along? Like, um, I, I ended up mutants and the film had a good festival run. So I kind of, and it was my first film. So I just, hop on that wagon and travel a lot and had a lot of fun, you know? And after a year, I was like, I need to make another one fast, you know? Cause I'm, uh -huh. I'm 30 years old. I'm just beginning. And I'm like, I, I need to, to make another one. And I had all these ideas that I was pitching to my, my producer. And he was like, these are all cool ideas, but you know, all of them miss some, some depth, you know, like the, the, the flame is there, but we need to, we need to build a fire here. So mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I get you. And I don't know, just kind of t nourishing all those ideas that I love. At some point I connected to that with it, with the, the story of, yeah, the, the hunt of my, my friend that was uh, bringing a pickup truck to uh, another city for her husband that was a mechanic. And she didn't realize, but the truck was in miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour. So she drove like super fast going <laughs> to the garage. And, and I, I, he told me that story and it was like a small woman and stuff. And I, I talk about it. It was so powerful to me, but at the same time, it was more comedic of a story. And I didn't want just to kind of tell a story about this miles per hour stuff, you know? So I kind of, I was trying to link her and when my like souvenir of my mother having her, her hard time in rural region where I grew up and knowing when I was young that she, she didn't felt at her place and wanted to leave, then it all clicked, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of spin that this desire, like, you know, this die hard desire to get the fuck out. I kind of, I was like, okay, where, what's, where the, what's the furthest point I can push it, you know? Mm -hmm. And how can I, how can this liberty can be very hard to kind of hold on to, you know? Mm -hmm. well, that's so, that's so interesting. Have you shown the film to your mother? I'm sure you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. And it's crazy because my, my sisters and my father, you know, and my uncles and aunt that know her, they were like, wow. Because, you know, that little mantra that she's telling at the beginning, mm -hmm. my mother 
asked our sister and I to tell it before we were going to school when we were oh, young. Really? Because I was going to ask about that. That's so interesting. Uh -huh. so everybody recognized her, but my mother, she, she didn't <laughs> spoke about it. That's so interesting. And when, like talking about like, you know, like you have her as such a dominant like female role and then you have the men in a much less positive like light. <laughs> How, uh, how, how did you like want to have that juxtaposition? Like even, you know, between like the son and his lover and then like the father just being so dismissive and then the sheriff kind of going both way and jelly. Like, did you want to have, like, were you saying something about masculinity? Like, what, what did you want to say about masculinity? I mean, obviously having, you know, you know, um, the different types of people all sort of merging. Uh, yeah, I've been asked, like, is that the feminist film and uh, stuff like that? And really, I just wanted to, you know, tell a good story, an engaging story, just and show a wild ride. And I, I love that. You know, I've been raised by my father worked a lot and I got two sisters and my mother was at home. So, you know, I kind of have a strong bond with their vision on life or like I could observe them, uh, you know, struggle with life and stuff like that. So this is still clear in my head. And to me, it felt like, I don't know, when it appeared to me, I, I just wanted to save her. You know, when Maureen mm -hmm. appeared in my head, I, ju I just wanted to save her. And I wanted to, I wanted to give her the, you know, best and antagonizing forces I could muster in their little universe, you know. So it all came like that. But at the same time, I think even all the characters, even if, yeah, here, like the, the male are, are shown like in a more dark light, I tried to put some handle on them so you could see parts of lights and humanities and maybe you wanted for them to get out of that confusion and be saved as well, you know, when the, maybe the credit roll you, Mm -hmm. You're thinking about Maureen's husband that at the end, he just, he's just like, like he, he's powerless, you know, and right. I wanted to feel that and maybe for us to feel a bit for that guy, you know, and I wanted to, you know, yeah, I wanted to try to see that through the eyes of Maureen all the time. So I don't want to get into, I don't want to, speak a very precise message but I want to show what Maureen is seeing and what she's feeling and try like I'm a big fan of Flannery O'Connor who's mm -hmm. a right. I love man it's incredible American author and right she is wow and I love how she, the moral line of her character is so blurry and mm -hmm. I love it and I that's my view on the world I think we even the worst person I think is trying to do her best with the shitty uh, background she have or whatever you know mm -hmm. and that there's always a way to redempt yourself but it's not everybody that find that way but anyway so so yeah so at the end do you feel optimistic that she's going to <laughs> be able to start her new path I don't know really <laughs> Like when, when it cuts to black and the country music get in, I'm, mm -hmm. I stop thinking about her. You know, sometimes I think about her and I wonder where she's at. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, she's still like, she's on the run and she's more resourceful than ever. And I think that her struggle is not over though. And, but, um, so I don't think she gets caught, um, but I don't think she's out of the wood uh, either, you know, mm -hmm. and well, that's a perfect thing out of the woods. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally and metaphorically. Right. Uh -huh. Are you working on a new film now or how, how has, you know, COVID affected your ability to work and if you're working on something to convene? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I thought I would be traveling for the next month, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the festival, uh, the film is doing super great in festival. I think we got, we're close to uh, 90 selections now. Wow. And, uh, I like their selection right now in Italy and Spain and Kosovo. And I was, uh, yeah. 
some festival I w always dreamt to go, you know, and now it's, it, I can't. So, but, mm -hmm. so I was like, yeah, I'm going to work on that new project. You know, I have a, an idea, a little pitch and stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it's not that, it's not that easy, even though you're, you've got the time and right. everything looks perfect, but it's new project. I never know how it will unfold, you know, and uh those new projects are for me are hard to start it's it requests like so much time and at the same time since you're beginning you're going in so many wrong direction and kind of dead end and you got to backtrack and throw in the garbage 95 percent of what you're writing and it, uh, it kind of takes a toll but that's the name of the game but i'm still too green to be used to that <laughs> And it must be challenging. Did you have the same producer for Mutants and for this one, or did you work with a different crew? Uh -huh. Yeah, his name is Hani uh, Wishu. Mm -hmm. He's a great producer and a great friend. And, uh, you know, when I work on this stuff, I'm all in and maybe even too, too involved. Like, I have a hard time separate myself and my life and the project. And I think it's a good thing in a way because it means you're committed, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's just kind of too it's too much and it kind of spill on your relationship and stuff like that so i'm still trying to manage that but because of that he him and i we've been through a lot and he's still with me and still he's a very clever guy and you know a lot of producers are good accountant mm -hmm. and not that good on the creative continent and kind of asking the right question and Hanny is just the opposite, you know. He's not the, he's not an accountant, <laughs> but he's such a good creative producer, and we always push our our, our babies like mm -hmm. so far, you know. And I I got to give him a lot of credit. He questioned the, he questioned the material I work with, and he and he consider myself as well as an artist. And even though it's tough, I know we're he's doing that for the purpose mm -hmm. of the film you know so yeah i'm i'm so i'm super happy to work with that guy and i'm still working with him for the feature mm -hmm. oh good well i just want to say thank you i really enjoyed the film and good luck and thank hope you hopefully you'll be able to hit the road not too long and see everybody's like a reaction because it's really such a powerful powerful film well thank you so much thanks for mm -hmm. sharing my film with your your audience and uh I hope we'll meet in the future with the new film in a, you know, maybe somehow normal <laughs> conditions. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jeanne. Bye. Okay. Bye.